Hey guys, it's Prepare to Die Harry. Hello. I'm Dinosaur. Today we're going to be showing you how to make this cute little dinosaur. It, it is super duper easy. I have one baking in the oven, but this one has been made with just basic clay. Um, most of it is Primo. And I'll be using the colors yellow and orange to make this cute little guy. And for the faces, I don't paint them on until the end after I bake them. And I use acrylic paint for that. I don't have a lot of paint and I'm working on getting more. And I can't glaze these guys because I don't have glaze. But I'm just going to show you the basics of making this cute little guy. And to let you guys know beforehand, these guys take about 275 degrees in just a regular oven. And you put them in there for about 15 minutes, 13 to 15 minutes. And then they come out nice and hard. And they're not very breakable unless you like want to smash them with a hammer, which I don't think you would do that because those are just adorable. And I'm just going to show you guys how to make these. Okay, you're going to start with just a basic ball. And you're going to take it and roll it around. And as you see, I'm just doing this, rolling it around in my palm. And if you get dirt in it, you just kind of poke it off. So do that and this is not going to be an editing job since I am doing this just on a regular iPad just using capture which is a really good app I would recommend it highly and we're just gonna roll all these yellow already balls into smoother balls so I'm just gonna pull my hands out of there so you guys can see little dinosaur you can just kind of study him because I know a lot, a lot of you are going to watch all the way through this, but I'll let you guys get a quick view of him. And It's really, really easy to figure out how to do this, and I figured it out by somebody else's tutorial. I've watched a couple of them, but a lot of them don't have tails, and I've added a tail because I just think it looks so much cuter with the tail. And I added a mustache, which I think you guys just kind of see as a... Uh, cute little mouth but it's a mustache and he has a little red lips and he has his cute little winky eye and he's real cute and he's just really cute I just like him and I've made a couple of these but they're all in the oven or cooling down but here we go as you see we have this ball and we have three balls like this excuse that it's a kind of a mess up I'll fix that it's just gonna goes an accent or something and we're gonna take a smaller ball and this big ball and we're just gonna combine them but what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the smaller ball on the bottom and gently push down to make a flat surface but you're gonna notice that the head is a lot bigger than the body which makes it kinda like a chibi but it's really cute and then you're going to take one ball like this you're just going to roll out a tail, which you do this by going like a regular ball. Get a regular ball here. And you're going to take an end, whatever end you want, and start rolling it with your finger, but making sure that in other parts they you don't roll that part, you roll this part. And this tail is going to be a bit big, so I'm probably going to cut it down a little bit. But for the most part, this is a pretty good size if you want a big one. But I'm going to tear off this big part because I don't like that. And I'm going to roll it back up into a ball. And I'm going to do that again. I just want to get to the perfect size for this little guy which is currently just two I don't know how to say this weirdly 
without being weird, two little balls. And now we're just gonna connect the tail to whatever side you want. It doesn't matter because it's just two round balls. And to do this, we're just going to take this and push it on. And let's see if I can get this. And then on the bottom, I don't like to keep it like that. So I kind of curve it up, but I push it down, which does add a lot of fingerprints, but this is a good design for beginners. And I'm just going to take this basic tool you can find at Michael's or anything. It's just a knife, and I've had it for a long, long time. And I'm just going to use the end of it, which is not used for anything, and just smush this down. You can use basically any tool for this, but I prefer to do this with my fingers a lot, but I can't do this because I don't, just can't right now. It's a bit of a small body for me, but I've done a couple of them. And you're just going to take this, start smoothing it. Make sure you keep a roundish shape for the body and just keep smoothing. And there you go, a little basic shape of a dinosaur. And I like to curl the tails because it just makes it cuter than having a flat tail, I think. And you have that so far. Ooh, he looks like a kind of little, like a caterpillar almost. Now, to make the hands and everything, I'm just going to roll this into a ball. And you can use flat surfaces or you can use your hands to make a ball. And I'm going to cut off what parts I've mixed because I've been doing clay all day. I have not cleaned my surface and I do not eat on the surface. We eat without tables because it's a lot easier just to make a microwave dinner and everything. But uh, just cut off that part. And I'm just going to roll this out into a small log roll and doing this makes it a lot easier for our next step which is going to make the arms and feet and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and cut it in half and make sure if I need that and then you're gonna take this part and you're going to cut it in half again and you're just going to take these and roll them up into a ball which I find easier to do with my hands all the time because your hands they may leave fingerprints but they're a lot easier to use than using a table because the table does have a flat surface and once you get to the right size that you want this one's a little bit big so I'm gonna trim it down a little bit by just tearing off a piece which could be used for an arm later because you don't want to overuse too many clay tools and what I just did is I just took that and I put it on to the bottom of the body at about the same angle as the head and it really looks cute and then you just take that and take the bottom and just kind of maneuver it to a kind of petal like place and kind of just I would like to smush mine down on the bottom but you don't always have to do that I like having flat bottoms though and so I'm gonna do that and kind of fix it it's one and make sure you have round ball all the time because it's really hard to do this if you're trying to smooth it down with your hands and everything and because my other one was so big with just this, I'm going to cut this down a little bit so I don't have such a big problem. Roll it up into a ball. And it's about the same size. It's a little bit smaller, I guess, but that can be smoothed out. So I'm just going to attach that. And usually I don't make the feet this big. They turn out differently every time I do them. But I think that just makes them unique. This one just kind of hangs out like that. Now you have your basic shape. And I'm going to take the leftover clay that I have over here. And I'm just going to make 
a ball out of this, and I'm gonna have it in half. So roll it up in your hands, make it all nice and warm. And then I'm just going to take this, split it in half. And I'm sorry for the bad quality of this, but I think this is as good as it gets for me. And take that and place it on to your little dinosaur. And I like to smooth mine down a little bit on the sides, but it depends on what I'm making. This one is more of a big kind of fat kind of dinosaur. Take your other one and smush it into that. And then, as you can see, we have the basic form is a little dinosaur. And this guy needs some scales so he can match his little purple buddy. See, you don't have a face. What's going on? Okay, so to have the scales done, I've just made a slice out of my orange clay. And I've made about eight little slices. And I'm going to roll these all into balls really quick. And just rolling them into balls makes them a lot easier to turn into little spikes. Because the spikes aren't supposed to be very sharp. They're supposed to be kind of soft and cute. Because dinosaurs like this, the little chibi dinosaurs, are a lot cuter than what a lot of people do with their polymer clay. And I find it a lot easier to roll them into balls to form them into their little triangle shapes. So, I'm just going to finish rolling these up. And the heat from your hand will make these more easy to move around and maneuver and just form them into whatever you want. Last one. Okay, now you're going to take your little ball and you're going to grab the corners, kind of like that, and make a kind of a V shape with the tips of your fingers. And then you're going to take your flat surface and you're going to push down. Now that's going to make like a basic spike, but I find them a bit fat, so I just do that a couple of times till I get to the shape I want. You can make your scales round or triangle or make them even squares if you want to. I just find that triangles are a little bit easier for dinosaur kind of shape. So I'm going to do that. And it doesn't matter what kind of technique, if you even just want to cut them, I just like the softer type of look for my little dinosaur. And some of these are going to be bigger than the others. If you see, this one is a lot bigger than that one. But that's okay because not all dinosaurs are perfect. They're supposed to be unique. And I think about eight work. I haven't found ones that make more. It depends on how big you want your little cute dinosaur. Now... A lot of people have made tutorials on this, and I figured why not make one really quick, and since I'm home alone, I get to do this all by myself, and it's going to be so much fun to see these all done, and hopefully, oh, there goes the oven. That means that another little dinosaur has been completed, and I will go out there and hopefully pull back the one that I made before, which I believe was either a blue or a green one. I'm pretty sure it was a blue one. And I chose a couple of different colors, but it's basically a good thing to make a light one and then put dark accents on it. But I've found that either way works, as long as they are not the same color, so they do not blend. 
Now, this one happened to have a little friend that I made, which was the same colors except the scales were purple and the skin was pink. And I ended up trying to paint the face, and I did a really bad job of it, and it ended up smearing everywhere, and, and so I just kind of threw that one away. But this one is a really cute one, and I just love it. It's so cute. Now, okay, that you have your little dinosaur shape, you're going to take whatever one you think best. I always like putting the biggest one that I've made on top, and fix it right on top. Sometimes towards the front or towards the back is okay, but I like towards the middle front of mine. And you're just going to put this on and squish it and make sure that it's all cute looking and then move on to your next one. And it does not matter how quickly you do this, it just matters if you get it right. And I like mine being all cute like this. And I like these colors especially because they just are really pretty together and I think the cute little yellow makes such a pretty little background for the orange little spikes. So I'm going to do this. And I'm sorry if my hands are in the way of you seeing this. I'm trying to do this with a very small range. And it's kind of hard to do this tutorial for me because I've never done a Palmer Clay tutorial like this. And I'm trying to keep in frame, but I can't see the other side. So I'm kind of just eyeing this and looking back at the camera to see if you guys can see. Now, once you get back here, you kind of want to be careful because you do not want to bend your tail too much. Bending it too much will make it a little bit harder to see and a little bit harder to put scales on also. So when you get back here, you're going to turn your little dinosaur this way and you always want to make sure that this is in a straight line because I can't always do them in a straight line. I try and it's a little bit harder to do on camera of course. But I try and do that and what you're going to do is you're going to kind of slide it into here and you kind of pull your body and your head a little bit apart, don't tug too much, and put your skill there, and then set him back, and then kind of just push back. So he's just barely touching. And then you can continue putting on your scales, little triangles. Now, you don't always need eight. Sometimes it's cuter with less. I'm going to try and take this one and cut it down in size a little bit. And because I just think it's cuter to make at least eight, sometimes I use seven, sometimes I use six. It depends on how big it is. It always depends on how big it is. I'm going to do that and you're going to pull it out a little bit and then curve it up. Kind of making a half U kind of looks like an orange. Now doing that I have finished my little dragon and he is ready to be baked. Again baking these the basic temperature is 270 degrees and make sure you put a thermometer in there to check the that it is baking at the correct temperature. It depends on if you can set it completely. Do not use these in a microwave. I've tried it in a microwave and it does not work. It melts the clay and it doesn't do anything. It just looks horrible. Use an oven where you can set the precise amount of time and precise amount of degrees. Now it's 270 Fahrenheit and put them in there for 15 minutes. Do not take them out early or do not leave them in there late. I leave them in there to cool down a little bit, but I always take them out and put them in a small rag to cool down naturally. Because if you like put them from very hot into very cold room or into a cold temperature very quickly, it will make them crack and you will see tiny cracks or big cracks in your sculpture which you don't really want to see. Now I've kind of smush this guy down 
but I'm going to try and make him a little bit rounder. And doing the final touches on these things, it's a little bit harder for to imagine that this is just a very small project when it takes a little bit of a long time. And this is not going to be an edited video, so it's going to be pretty long. And I'm really sorry for if I wasted your time or anything, but I hope you guys enjoy your little dinosaurs. And I'm going to bring back my other dinosaur and let you see how I paint the faces. And I'm going to get up. Run out there. Okay, I was wrong. I did make a green one. The blue one's in the oven. And this one's slightly hot and it's been sitting for about the same 15 minutes or more. But make sure that you don't grab them when they're too hot. If they're too hot, let them sit. And as you can see, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scales just like the other one, and it's a little bit chubbier looking. You can tell the difference because each one is unique. This one has a fatter head and fatter body, but smaller little body parts. And the tails, well, they're about the same. But it depends on what you want from yours. And what I'm going to do now is take my acrylic paint, and I'm just going to be using regular black acrylic paint. I'm just going to make a cute little face. You can do an assortment of little faces. Just make them simple, though. And you can use paintbrushes, but I actually am using a dotting tool, which is used for nail art. And I find it works pretty well. So you're just going to take your acrylic paint, and you're going to squeeze out some. You're going to take whatever you're painting with, and dip it into the paint. And grab your dinosaur and I'm just gonna eye this from here and I'm gonna make a embarrassed kind of looking dinosaur and a lot of these are emoticon faces which I find work very cutely on these but you can paint pretty much any face you want And doing these, they're pretty fun to make different faces on. You can do so many different designs with these. And I'm going to make this guy happy. He's going to be a cute, happy, little, embarrassed, funny, laughing dragon. Dinosaur. So I've done my basic little face, and what you want to do is you're going to make sure that all your edges are clean, because if they are not clean, it's not going to look cute. So make sure they're clean edges. And if you always need to, you can add some detail later, because acrylic paint just dries on, and it can wash off pretty easy too. I've gotten some always on my fingers, and I've always been able to wash it off. Sorry, that squeaking noise is uh, my dog, Lulu. She's uh, trying to get me to play with her. Now, even if you want to, you could add little mustaches or something like that. But I find this very cute and very simple, and... Then you just clean off your tool with a napkin or something like that. I usually actually just use my fingers because they're a lot easier and you can just clean your fingers off really easy with just water and soap. Okay, so this is a finished product. Other than that, the only thing, if you want to make it into a charm like I have, you're going to need one eye pin, which I'm going to be doing on this little guy. So you're going to take your eye pin, and I have a pretty long eye pin, so I'm just going to cut that. And make sure it does not poke through the other side. So I'm going to cut it to about that. 
Now, be sure that you either have a parent's permission, depending on if you're young, or safety tools like I have. They have a very firm grip. Okay, now you're just going to take your tool, your little eye pin, and put it in the center of a scale. I find that this works best because it looks like it's almost not there, but you can still wear it. You're just going to put it in the center. You're just going to push down. Just straight down. Don't move it anywhere. And you can either leave it there, or you can push down a little bit more. To there. So you can still see it, but it's barely visible. I'm sorry. <laughs> My dog is trying to get me to play with her, and I'm playing with her on the side. Um, this is just a basic little one and I'm probably going to put this one in the oven and get my blue one out. You can make these an assortment of colors. I suggest that you use a lighter color for the body and darker color for the scales but you could do both just light colors too. You could do like a light pink and a red maybe or you can do a light blue with a yellow. You could do so many things and you can make them so many colors. I just find that these are very cute. And I hope you like this. Please subscribe. And I will be making these about every week. I'll find something new. I'll probably teach you guys how to do this next week. It's just a paintbrush with some little driblets. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!